Or it could be that this is the mindset that this president wants to associate with. These are the people who help shape his life. His parents, they were communists. His mentor was a communist. It's all he knows. He's simply surrounding himself with like-minded individuals. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you the two questions. Did you read Dreams of My Father? Has anybody in the press asked this one question? What was the dream of his father? Why did his father leave him? To pursue Marxism and communism in Kenya. What was the dream of his father? Now, you surround yourself. He surrounds himself with Marxists, and they deny it and say, oh, yes, yes, yes. But I don't buy that. Let, let's go with Ronald Reagan. If Ronald Reagan, and he did, if he did the same thing, he brought in small government policy people from the Heritage Foundation, and he surrounded himself, surrounded himself with the Heritage Foundation, would anybody believe that, oh, no, that's just... Uh, of course not. It's intentional. Three days ago, I started with this chalkboard, and I asked you, I said, after you hear this, you have to make a choice. You have to make a choice, because it's no longer reasonable to say that this is all a coincidence. You have to make a choice. What you're seeing, is it the intentional destruction of the free market system? into redistribution of wealth, into globalism, into big government and Marxism, into class and race warfare? Is it intentional, fundamental transformation of America? Or is it this, but boy, they just keep getting it wrong. America, you can bury your head in the sand at our peril. Or you can draw a line in the sand. Next, he once collapsed Britain's economy and made billions in the process. Now he's funding the effort to collapse America and he gets a visitor's pass to the White House while he's at it. Can you guess who this is? Welcome back to a crash course, a Glenn Beck special on the radicals helping the president to transform America. Now to the man who could be dubbed radical in chief, one of the richest men on the planet. He's calling for a new world order, and he's someone the president listens to very closely. George Soros. He's the billionaire progressive activist who doesn't mind throwing his money around. His seemingly unending quest for big government control is kind of strange, perplexing to me, honestly, because he was born in Budapest, Hungary. His dad was a Hungarian Jew who was a prisoner of war in World War I. Soros eventually found his way to New York City in 1956. Oh, I've been happy about that ever since. By 1970, he had set up hedge funds that could help him make his fortune. He's the guy who helped collapse the British sterling. Yet he spent millions of that fortune on things like progressive blog sites like Media Matters, where bloggers can earn six-figure salaries just to sit around in their underpants and distort conservative words all day. Oh, they're going to be extra busy on tonight's show. He started the Open Society Institute, which seeks fairness and justice. Oh, social justice? He also helped start the Tides Foundation, which among its many super, super classics are the anti-capitalist story of stuff indoctrination video. He <laughs> has George Soros money. <laughs> Great. Shown in schools all across America to warp your children's brains and to make sure they know how evil capitalism is. He's also a globalist. He's one of the power players trying to establish a new world Watch when he says it. Notice how he stumbles every time he says it because he's like, uh-oh, I'm really spooky dude saying world, new world order, probably freaking people out. Watch him. He'll stumble every time he talks about establishing... You really need to bring China into the creation of a new uh, uh, uh -huh. uh, uh, world order, yeah. financial world order. So I think you need a, a new world order yeah. that China has to be part of of the process of creating it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I just want to say, uh, I just believe we should have a new... Uh, oh, no, I shouldn't be saying this on television. Uh, what else could I say? A new uh, world order.
So how does Soros impact U.S. policy? Through groups he funds like the Center for American Progress, Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner spoke there last month. The group now has one of ACORN's top guns, Steve Kest, as a senior fellow. Obama's former green jobs czar is a senior fellow there, too. And the list goes on. According to the Wall Street Journal, the Center for American Progress, which is the group that Van Jones and everybody has been hiding out in and picked the president's staff, helps the president write his talking points and makes decisions. The report in the Wall Street Journal states May 4th, for instance, the cap-and-trade energy and environment expert Daniel Weiss called on the president to name an independent commission to look at the causes of the Deepwater Horizon disaster. On May 22nd, he did just that. On May 21st, CAP President uh, John Podesta privately employed, uh, implored White House officials to name someone to the public point person on the spill response. Guess what? A few days later, they did that. On May 26th, uh, Weiss said that the uh, White House needed to demand that BP immediately set up an escrow account with the billions of dollars from which claims of the Gulf State residents would be paid out. Oh, yeah. They did that one as well. But don't worry, it's not like George Soros has anything to gain from how the president handles BP or anything like that. Brazil is, um, is the one that really stands to benefit from the BP oil spill catastrophe. As the U.S. moratorium makes more rigs available for other countries, Brazil is going to gobble them up. Brazil is plowing ahead now with a 220 billion uh, five year uh, 220 billion dollar five year plan to tap oil fields that are deeper than BP's ill-fated gulf well remember 220 billion dollars it's deeper than what we have here and the equipment is going to go from the gulf down there but again george soros has nothing to gain from this the soros fund management llc I guess we should tell you this, holds a stake in uh, Petro, uh, Petrobus, that is uh, the oil company of Brazil, in the amount of $900 million as of December 31st, 2009. Petrobus, the Brazilian oil company, that the Obama administration, get this, the Obama administration is now lending $2 billion to. You ready? Wait for it. What is the $2 billion going for? To perform offshore drilling in Brazil. So why would a guy who's trying to undermine the economy get a special pass to the Oval Office? You figure that one out. We're going to tie together what we've learned so far in this crash course next. So let's take a look at what we've learned in today's crash course that progressives and the Obama administration are using manufacturing and industry to help transform America. They're going through unions, through energy proposals like cap and trade. The only way the transition to clean energy will ultimately succeed is if the private sector is fully invested in this future. Through takeovers of companies like GM and the financial industry overhaul. And let's face it, that required some tough steps to stabilize the financial sector. And some of those steps weren't popular. I knew they weren't popular. I've got pollsters. Through education and the nationalization of the student loan industry. For a long time, our student loan system has worked for banks and financial institutions. Today, we're finally making our student loan system work for students and our families. We've learned that many of the people working for and advising the president are Marxists. We're in a position where you have, to, you have to say who is going to step down so someone else can have power. We've learned that the administration has no problem associating itself with militants who intimidate like the Black Panthers, like ACORN, or like the SEIU. I hate white people. All of them. Every last iota of a cracker, I hate it. We've learned that members of the ultra-radical groups of the 1960s, the Weathermen and the SDS, are helping run our country today. We're going to be on the streets and in every institution in this country from now on. What would you We're going to replace capitalism with socialism. And that billionaires like George Soros, who are funding the effort to collapse America, get invitations to this White House. You really need to bring China into the creation of a new 
uh, 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 world order. You need a, a new world order. That enough to make your head spin? I'll tell you what crash course is coming tomorrow next. Tomorrow, don't miss these top stories in the Wall Street Journal. I'm Kelly Evans. American businesses with a global presence are finding the road to stable profits easier than companies that don't operate abroad. And Unilever is investing in algae as it seeks an eco-friendly replacement for palm oil to use in everything from soap to ice cream. Plus, growing demand for luxury items is driving up the price of French wine. Some Bordeaux's are now pricing at more than $1,900 a bottle. For more and to follow these stories, pick up a paper on newsstands or go to WSJ.com. Now, it's time to go beyond secondhand sound bites and discover the number one source for in-depth coverage that will keep you informed and prepared. The Wall Street Journal. Call 888-GET-WSJ1 for daily delivery, 24-7 updates at WSJ.com, and mobile access, all included when you subscribe now. Just $19.95 for daily delivery, 24-7 updates at WSJ.com, and mobile access. Call now. 888-GET-WSJ1. I'm often asked the question, is investing in gold right for me? In fact, many people think that owning gold is only for the wealthy. But you can own gold with a minimal investment. It's easy to own gold. At Goldline, our clients invest in physical gold, not gold stocks or gold funds. Call Goldline and talk with an account executive who can answer your questions and discuss the available gold products, like our popular European coins or proof American coins. Your gold is then shipped directly to you, or we will arrange storage for you. Goldline has been helping investors acquire precious metals since 1960, and we work with new clients every day who have decided that it's time to invest in gold. Isn't it time that you consider gold? I invite you to join the thousands of hardworking, satisfied clients who have chosen Goldline to help diversify by investing in gold. Call Goldline now and receive a free investor's kit and the American Advisor newsletter. Our account executives are here six days a week to serve you. Give us a call today. If you have diabetes and you're on Medicare, call now to get the new talking meter and enjoy pain-free testing. These new meters are more accurate, they're easier to use, and the best news is you don't have to prick your fingers anymore. Call now and Areva Medical will send you one of these new meters for free. Your blood glucose reading is 122 milligrams per deciliter. And if you have Medicare, your testing supplies may also be covered. Areva makes it simple. They bill Medicare directly. There are no upfront costs. And they deliver your supplies right to your door for free. And if you call 1-800-704-1967, we'll send you a free Betty Crocker Diabetes Cookbook filled with delicious recipes. That's 1-800-704-1967. Call Ariva today. You'd be glad you did. Ever wonder who's searching for you? Five people searching for me? Go to mylife.com, the Internet's leading people search site. Just type in your name and see if someone is searching for you for free. Could be my old client. Maybe he wants me back. At mylife.com, there are millions of unclaimed messages. You could have messages waiting for you right now. Go to mylife.com, type in your name, and see if someone is searching for you right now for free. All caught up in your radicals? Tomorrow night, we tackle revisionist history. That's history that's been erased from the history books. You can catch me on the Fox Business Network on Freedom Watch at 10 a.m. Eastern on Saturday. From New York, defending freedom. Good night, America.